shower has arrived which is going to be fitted to the skimmer inlet pipe so that will hide that so what we've done is we've gone for a black three tier backy shower and the measurements are Chris 600 wide and it's 850 high and 250 deep okay. and the, the chute here at 400 all right so this this back of shower came with all the media that we'll need to go into each back of tray and the guy that we've bought it off has kindly labeled each one so that when we fit it we'll know which order to fit it in comes with the pipe already made for us with the holes cut out so it's all ready to go so we've been out this morning and bought some bits it's not we don't usually use flexi hose but we thought we'd have a go this time so we've got how much did you get three that meters. three meters of hose and that was 17 pound and mm. we've got two, two what are they chris 90 degree bends rubber bends to fit them on. So one will go on there on the end like so and that will go through the shed then this one will then come down inside the shed mm -hmm. and then that will fit to that and then the other end will go to the pump. Right so what we're going to do is have our McDonald's and we'll get back to you. So we're back again we've had our McDonald's so we're nice and full and we're raring to go. So what Chris is going to do is going to take these back shower trays over to his, the shed, fit it, a dummy run, because he needs to cut out where he wants his piping to go. So we'll do that. Get the back the media out. Okay, so that's the first one. Not bad, because um, in my opinion, backy shower's quite ugly looking. So we've decided to put the backy shower there. Originally, we were going to put it in the middle of the pond, but then we realised the um, outlet pipe from the Nexon that's pumping clean water is on that side there. Whoops. And if we had it in the middle, it would probably be drawing clean water back through the skimmer, which didn't make sense because we want it to circulate. So we've put it there instead by the clean water. There goes the second one up. They sit on um, the shelf, the waterfall shelf sleeve there. Right, 
it's not a bad fit so I'll take you around to show you what it looks like from the front of the pond there it is in all its glory so I don't think it looks too bad actually So what Chris has got to do now is um, cut a hole up the top for the inlet pipe to go in. So I have to cut a bit of the shed out. So we'll get back to you when he starts that. Right, so gosh, all the fish are at the window. Sorry guys, I had to film this. Because they look, to me, they look amazing. looking great aren't they yeah happy happy fish right right so this now has to cut out some of the shed for the um spray bar to fit that's going that side though isn't yeah. it so you see there i want to so you can go back a little bit more so i've just got to cut a little piece out of that side same with this one Yeah, <coughs> that bit. That's the bit I've got to cut out. You know, it's the um, DIY shoes, guys. Yep. Slipper club again. Nothing wrong with them. Multifunctional slippers. Right, so I'm going to have to cut along here, round, so that's that. But behind that, coming down here, inside, I've got a post, a strut of the shed. So I'll have to go as close as possible and see if I can cut that out. So that's my next step, is to cut that out. Jigsaw and cut a cut right there. Might be right.
Well, Shed yeah. falls down. Oops, when your blade snaps and gets stuck in the shed. Happy days. When you go back to your cavemen tools, because you broke your jigsaw blade. Right, so when he um, manages to knock this out, we'll get back to you. Oh, here comes the blade. Hey, right, we'll get back to you. <laughs> There's little Chris's head, right? <laughs> right, he's done the um, two holes. Now we're going to um, build the backy shower. Uh, just make sure it, uh, it's level. Level. It's spot on. No. You notice, know, guys, Chris is getting more confident in front of the camera, so yeah, I can fi yeah. so I can film him more. There you go. Right, so we can fill them up. Or do you want to uh, do a dummy runner again? Make sure it all fits in first, then we take it down, and then we we'll put then. the uh, media in. Right, go on then. So this backy shower is. 600 millimetres wide, 810 millimetres high, and 210 millimetres in depth. Now, if anybody's interested on what a backy shower does for your pond and how it works, Dazzle Koi has a fantastic video out on what a backy shower does, how to build it, how to use it, etc. Very, very good, very informative. We watched that and that's um, been another main and one of our reasons why we decided we we're going to get a proper backy shower. do it I'm just gonna dry fit it. Yay it fits. So now it's okay. So now that one goes back in this side goes in as well everyone. Right? Okay. So now, I can take it all apart now, fill each one up with the, the media, tighten this one up properly uh, where we want it, because I, want, I don't want to glue that, because I'm, just in case you need to take this all apart, and you can't then take it apart because it's all glued. Mm. So that was the old idea of... That's it. Right. So... Take them in. Right, so the, the backy media that's come with this shower is the ceramic ones and it came with the shower. So 
So for the three tier, 600 millimeter wide shower and the three bags of media cost us 500 pounds and it was 25 pounds to have it delivered. So I know this is probably one of the cheaper versions of the media to put in your backy, but it starts us off. Um, so yeah, the three bags that all came with it. We'll just switch the TV off so we'll get done for copyright or anything. There you go. So apparently with Baki Shower Media, you don't lay them uniformed or tidy, you scatter them around and not see the top tier where the spray bar, then you don't pack so, that one as you much. You like that, yeah? No, Chris, stop messing about. Yeah. See, told you, it's getting less shy with the camera now. Chris? Your box, just throw them in. So yeah, but So we'll um, do all three showers, uh, baskets, and we'll get back to you. Right, so we're filling up the top one where the spray bar goes. Um, we won't, we will not fill this up to the top because we're going to put a layer of fleece, pick up the fines. Already, Chris will measure that and cut it, put it on, just keep get some more in there, couldn't we? Then with what's left of the ceramic media, we can fill up the other two. What the ones that can't we? Yeah. Oh. Oh. There we go, yeah, guys. Piece of that. So what we'll do is we'll measure that, cut it, and then cut it's them done. all to that size so I can just replace them as and when needed. While he's doing that, you can just see my little guinea pigs there. I've got two rescue guinea pigs, Squeaky and Rocky. Right, so pop that in. And because fleece can clog quite quickly, what we're going to do is we're going to leave a good gap on one side so that if it does get blocked the water can still run back into the pond to hope hopefully prevent overflowing issues
Right, so we're just leaving a little gap like that, just for any overflow issues. Right, we'll get in there. Hey Max, you watching? Hey good boy. I've no idea how long this type of cheap huh? ceramic media will last, but we'll see. I've heard reports that it does start to um, break down over time. So if anyone's got OCD nature, you could get a bit paranoid on how to lay these. Think, oh, I'll just move that one and I'll just move this one. Just have to make sure you can fit the um, each tub back on in it. So just to recap, this Aki shower is connected to our skimmer. There's the skimmer, and the skimmer runs on a 5,000 litre an hour pump, which we are not sure is going to be enough to pump this Aki shower. So obviously it's got quite a way to pump from there. To the backy shower but anyway the skimmer comes through into our homemade static K1 bed and then into the backy shower and I see Chris has gone back to using his piping we were going to use no. a flexi hose I take that off. oh I beg your pardon apparently he's taking that pipe off and we're going to put the flexi hose on we caught all that this morning. We popped out to Waterworld in Chester or near Chester. We've got three metres of flexi hose for £17. And then two rubber connectors to be able to fit the backy shower to the pump. So obviously once we've got it how we want, there's a few cosmetic issues with the shed that we'll need sorting out to finish it off nicely. Our um, kite's a bit low, it's hard to fill, but then the kite, <laughs> the shade. Oh. There it is. Not looking bad. So now we've got to fit it up. There's the um, our little water piggies being nosy. Oh, 
was watching a video of ours last year and um, it's amazing how big some of these goy have grown. Heating over the winter really did help. Right, so let's go in the shed and um, watch him connect the pipes up. So when we clean the static bin there, all the waste comes out here. So now we'll fill up the static bed, prime the, prime the pump and see if it leaks and see what type of flow we've got coming through it. Right, Chris is going to switch the pump on. Let's see what happens.
nothing. Get back to you. Ah, here it comes. There it goes. Here it comes. Yeah. Right, it seems to be flowing this side, but not so much the other side. I'm just wondering we haven't got it at the right angle. Yeah, coming in. I think we need to do a few more adjustments guys, don't think the pipe's in the right place. See all the black fly larvae are coming out the pipes. Turn it off. You need to adjust that up there. Right. Try again. Take two. Black fly larvae coming out there, right, I think. Okay. Here it comes. Right, that's a little bit better. But I do think, guys, we're going to have to get a bigger pump to get a good flow. Here comes the flow into the pond. Maybe you guys can let us know whether you think that's a fast enough flow through it. I don't think it is. I think maybe we need a like, 10,000 litre pond, uh, pump. But it is working. We've been getting there without it. Plenty of dirt coming out. Right, so it is running. Weather properly, as we're, we're new to these. Is another issue. Looks a bit slow to me. If anyone has got anything to say about it, whether they think it's too too slow. Fish seem to be interested in it anyway. Right, so now I'm going to put my um, baby breath in between them. And I think we're finished. Or do you have to get the roots in or? I think so. I think once it, it rains. Well, I suppose it's trial and error to practice. Mm -hmm. Does this die off in the winter, I assume, doesn't it? Won't cope with the cold weather, will it? Do you reckon? I don't think so. Yeah, I'd say we never used it before, have we? So hopefully, look at the fish being nosy, enjoying themselves there, looking at us. 
hopefully the water will splash yeah. off and then all the roots will grow down. That's not bad, is it? You see some people's backy showers with these and it's just like the whole thing's just covered in it, isn't it? Yeah, they must come back every year then, mustn't they? Little fingers, come in handy, these sort of jobs. See what? Does it come back? I think it dies off. Okay, can it? Because that's when you get someone's, that's all the way down the, the front. On YouTube can let us know, is this likely to come back or is it a seasonal? We've never tried it before. Plus we get the, um, the sea wind, so we might not like it. That's good, that. Is it? Yeah. I'm glad this one hasn't gone as far as the other one. and get it in deep because I mean, if we get some rain tonight it might wash it all out because it hasn't um, took yet has it uh. right let's see what the, how that goes guys if it will survive or snuff it we'll see does it look nice yeah so yeah guys if anybody wants to comment on whether we we need to up the flow. At the minute we've got a 5,000 litre per hour pump on it and we're not sure if that's enough flow or not. Alright guys, see you later. Bye.